questions a little bit later from the audience, so uh, start thinking of what you want to ask now, um, and we'll ask you to line up in just a little bit. So, um, obviously being cast in a super, superhero movie these days is, uh, is, is a pretty huge deal. Walk us through the process of uh, how you got this. Uh, well, I moved uh, from Australia to the United States about four years ago, and um, I'd done bits and pieces, uh, worked on uh, Star Trek, a couple of other films, and um, about six or eight months before we shot for, I got a call to have an audition with Kenneth Branagh, and um, didn't know, you know, a whole lot about the character before that process, and read as many comic books as I could, and uh, tried to get up to speed, and it was about a, uh, probably, three or four month process from when I first auditioned to actually being the part, so it was, a, it was a, you know, a lengthy time, and then eventually it all worked out. Thank you, and I got cast. Did you, um, during the process, did you, did you kind of track the online reaction to you being uh, named this door? Uh, <laughs> a little bit, but it was, uh, it was one of those things, you, you, you start to read things and then you see things you shouldn't see, and then you see good things, and then it's, it's a constant sort of battle within yourself about you know, what you want to focus on. But um, no, you try to stay away from you know, logs and things. I think it's, uh, you know, you have to distract at times. And just, you know, I read as many comic books as I could, and things on uh, Norse mythology that you know uh, motivated the, the Thor comics and the, you know, the origin of it all. And um, yeah, just worked on the script you know, with, with Ken and Anthony Hopkins and Natalie Portman and uh, the rest of the cast. Working with those guys, um, what was the atmosphere on set like? It, it seems like not your your average crew for the superhero movie. Okay. Absolutely, I mean it was it was incredible. Ken Branagh is. Uh, you know, genius with uh, story and character, especially in that Shakespearean old English sort of realm, which uh, you know a lot of Thor is, um, but also has a real knack for for humour, you know, and obviously for character. And, um, and that set was just you know really assembled with people of the same attitude about working, were all incredibly excited to be there. And, and Anthony Hopkins is, was just wonderful. He's one of my favourite actors. And, uh, brings to set the same enthusiasm that, you know, I had on my first day and he's done 112 films or something now. So that was, you know, infectious to be around. And, uh, and you know, and Natalie Portman, the same, is just as sweet and wonderful and talented as, as you know, you can, you can imagine. Uh, but yeah, we're all, you know, playing superheroes. So was, there was an element of uh, incredible element of fun and, and excitement to be had. So. How much did humor come into play on set and, and actually in the, in the project itself? Uh, it was actually quite a bit, a lot more um, than was probably first anticipated. You know, the, the story is there's a, you know, a fantastical element of obviously other universes and worlds and we're playing gods, but at the center of it is a very, um, you know, a human story, and relatable, and, and then you know, when Thor comes to Earth, and he's this, Entitled prince of the realm and has the world in his fingertips and a very sort of impressive, strong, you know, opinionated character and he tries to pull that on Earth with, with you know, Nandi Portman and Cat Dennings and you know the, the likes. They, uh, there's a real element of that fish out of water. Um, it's a great sort of comic, you know, moments to be had there. So obviously fans of the comics are you know, looking to see how the characters can be portrayed on screen. Um, what do you think is different from the comic version of Thor to the on-screen version? I think it follows it pretty pretty closely. You know, it's um, it's an origin story. It's a sort of uh, you know Thor sort of you know beginning this this quest and you know about to take on the throne and um, and you know there's the comics have been done for forty or fifty years or something. So there's you know, many different directions we could have gone in. Um, but as far as the character is concerned, um, yeah, we, you know, we, we did as much of research as we could and spoke to as many people, Stan Lee and what have you, you know, about, about their opinions. And it was very, you know, collaborative sort of process. Uh, hopefully it's, uh, uh, or I think it definitely sort of hits, hits it on the head with you know, what people want to see. Awesome. Um, describe to us kind of the feeling of, of getting in that armor the first time and holding that hammer. Uh, yeah, it was awesome. It was, um, <laughs> I remember uh, you know, being a kid and sort of dressing up as a, as a, you know, some kind of superhero running around the house and it uh, looked nowhere near as cool as that. <laughs> well, my costume was nowhere near as cool as what we had. Uh, 
Um, it was just incredible. It's just, you know, chain marks of armory and, you know, leather and, you know, whatever sorts of materials they used to build this thing. It was extremely heavy, but it sold such an image that, uh, you know, it made my job easier. I walked on set with Anthony Hopkins and we were both, you know, dressed up, full, full, full gear and, uh, looked at each other and shook our heads and he just said, there's no acting required here, is there? We'll let this do the work and, uh, you know, thank you for uh, <laughs> That's awesome. Um, what kind of uh, physical preparations did you actually have to go through for this role? Uh, it was um, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of working out, a lot of eating. Um, there wasn't fun sort of food like, uh, you know, pizza. It was plain chicken breast and potatoes and Copious amounts to the point where it was, uh, you know, I see a chicken now and I will kill it. <laughs> <laughs> and then not eat it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just waste it. Just waste it. Yeah. 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 Apologise to him. You were in the audience, just to look away. I had a, um, I had a, a, a nutritionist um, say to me, you're a caveman, you're going to eat flesh, you know, protein. And I said, okay, what about. Um, you know, tofu, tempeh, and other sort of alternative, uh, you know, proteins. And he said, have you ever seen a herd of tofu? <laughs> <laughs> no. I said, good, don't eat it. <laughs> it's probably also got you in the mindset of the character. It did, yeah, yeah. Probably <laughs> not too much tofu in Asgard. <laughs> no, that's not. <laughs> that's the, uh, the hippie elements. <laughs> it's crossed it. So from the trailer, it looks like, um, you know, magic and sci-fi are kind of being used to describe the same thing. So yeah. how, how, how did the filmmakers kind of rectify an immortal godlike being existing and interacting with the current uh, universe? Uh, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I guess, you know, um, how, do you, how do you rectify the fact that you're basically a god sure, yeah. um, living in, in, in the real world? Yeah, well, it's a... Um, you know, as you know, it's, it's a blend of uh, sort of Viking mythology and science fiction, you know, and, um, and when, you know, when, when Thor comes to Earth, uh, obviously from the trailer, you see he, he's banished there. Um, but it was, I think, you know, the, the, the scope of it, the universe is just so huge, and, you know, you playing a god, there's no one really to draw from, is there? You, know, you don't go and interview a handful of them, they're not that accessible. Um, but, um, <laughs> but they uh, you know, so Kent said, look, we've got to make this, you know, we've got to find the human element, and, you know, this is, don't look at it as we're two gods speaking to each other, look at it as this is a, a father and a son, and two brothers, and, you know, that I can relate to, and, you know, as an audience we can too, so, um, yeah, it was constantly about sort of trying to simplify it, actually, not getting too involved in the backdrop and the scope of what was there, uh, which, you know, speaking of the backdrop, um, the, the, the sets of the scene of Asgard seem really epic. Were, were you interacting with a lot of physical sets, or was there, was there a lot of like, CG that were going on? Yeah, no, we, we had a ton of physical sets. You know, there were these um, incredible, these big warehouses with these incredible sets built in with, um, you know, the, the frost giant world of Jotunheim. You know, we had these big glaciers and you know, all sorts of bits and pieces. And, and, uh, and then the observatory and, and you know, the Asgardian kingdoms and the palaces and the throne rooms. And it was just sort of one after another, which um, once again was made it so much easier. You know, you didn't have to sort of pretend there was something there, it was in front of us. Um, and that made it just so much more fun. And, and also, it, you know, it looks so much better. You, know, you see that on the screen, you can tell, well, that's, that's, that's built. You know, the audiences are, you know, they're, they're, they're not silly, you know, but you can't trick them and sort of have some computer imagery and tell them, oh, yeah, it's real. It's, um, we're so used to sort of video games and special effects, I think, that you really have to, you know, you can get away with a little bit, but you really have to build the stuff. And, um, yeah, it's what I think so great about this, this particular thing. Excellent. Um, obviously, it's not just Thor. Um, you also signed up to be the Avengers. Did you have any trepidation kind of going into the project knowing that there was a huge like, number of things that you're going to have to be on. Uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> you still have to work for a bunch of years. Wait, where do I sign? <laughs> Look, I mean, as you get involved, you start to go, well, this is huge, and, you know, there's a party that says, I'm going to pull this off. But, 
uh, it's, it's also a mixture of, you know, the same sort of excitement and adrenaline and that sort of competitive nature that says, yeah, you know, throw me in amongst it. Um, obviously, these are special and Avengers have these incredible characters that have been established on their own and then throw them together and it's, uh, you've got, you know, one hell of a story. And, um, yeah, no, it's, it's really exciting. I've been talking to, you know, Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans and those guys and, and they're just, you know, super excited about it. And actually, Chris Evans the other, the other week, we both were talking about it, just going, oh my God, how do we, how do we get involved in this? this is, <laughs> what, what, a, what a trip. So, um, no, I think the, the excitement of the shadows, the sort of, you know, the nerves of it, it's fun. So. so while you're doing Thor, were you getting updates about, hey, this is how it plays into Avengers? Uh, yeah, yeah, a little bit, yeah. But, I mean, there wasn't a script back then, and, but I could sort of look at the comics and, you know, get a bit of an uh, idea of how it would, be, would roughly be assembled. Um, but uh, it, well, it wasn't a whole lot of, you know, we were just so in the four world and all, you know, like that. Cool. Um, do you have any hints about the plot? Well, yeah, you have no script here, we can all read it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, no, no, but I'd love to, uh, yeah, no, I couldn't say anything without being, yeah, kicked out of the film. <laughs> Rick, 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 over the Rick, Rick cast, yeah, yeah unfortunately. Um, it's, it's exciting. Epic. Yeah. <laughs> Huge. Yeah. Yeah. Words. Print that. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you guys want to start lining up for questions, um, we'll start taking questions from the audience pretty soon. So, um, start forming a line and I'll, I'll go back and forth once there's some, some people in line. Um, how, how excited are you uh, about working with Josh Whedon as a big deal at Comic Cons and, and you know, like very dear to our nerd hearts? Yeah, oh, Josh is fantastic. I worked with him on uh, Cabin in the Woods um, that he wrote and produced with Drew Goddard. And uh, way back when I was shooting Cabin in the Woods, was the, the casting for Thor, the process which was happening. And, and um, he said, you know, well, why aren't you involved in this? I said, no, I was early and then I took it. Been in and out, but I don't know what's going on. And he said, Oh, let me give Ken a call. Um, he called Ken Brandon, they didn't know each other, but knew of each other. And just said, Look, for what it's worth, I'm going to work with Chris. And I was like, It's a good bloke. And he you know, gave, <laughs> gave me some props. And, um, and that I think you know, helped sort of get me back in there. And, uh, uh, but he's just amazing. You know? he's, a, he's a fanboy, definitely, and knows the comics back to front. And he's, um, he's a true sort of fan of it all. And, and that's, that's the best way, the best people to work with, because they're, they're you know, the most open and uh, you know, intelligent sort of resource you can have. So having him, you know, not only directing, but writing as well, is as, as, as full proof as you could get, I think. It's, it's, it's great. Excellent. Um, you know, we've been hearing about Cabin in the Woods for a while. Um, what, tell us about the movie and, and your role in it. Yeah, it's sort of a... Um, Someone say the Truman Show meets Nine Little Dead, uh, which is an interesting thing to match together. Um, but it's a it's a thriller horror film. It's a great humor, very intelligent in the vein that you know, with Joss is. Um, uh, it's one of those simple things that I can't say too much about again. But um, it's uh, I, I did two films uh, MGM, with MGM, um, Red Dawn and Captain Wood. There's you know, some change of hands in the company, so those films will, um, will come out eventually. And I've been told later this year, you know, unofficially, but um, fingers crossed. That, that cool. happens, so. <laughs> um, you know how? Maybe you can't say too much about this, but how does Red Dawn kind of compare to the the um, story of the original? Uh, well, it follows the premise, obviously, you know, very closely. Um, uh, it probably gets into the, the, the characters a little more and, and sort of the, their personal sort of struggle and, and you know the way they kind of band together and that was you know for us was was what it was about it was a, you know, a group of young kids kind of being thrown together and you know without their parents and having to sort of uh, fight back against something and, you know, and, you know, fight for their survival and it's, um, it felt like you know school camp shooting that film it was literally a bunch of you know young guys and girls sent, you know, to another city and, uh, you know, minus our parents. <laughs> I've been living with my parents for a long time, so it wasn't that bad for me, but, uh, you know, and it was, it was a lot of fun, you know, we had, we had all sorts of weapons and things, and, you know, trained in, uh, you know, uh, some military guys, and, uh, yeah. 
Yeah. No parents and a bunch of weapons. Sounds awesome. That's right. Yeah. Good, good combination. <laughs> let's start with uh, questions right. Oh wow, there's three. Um, let's start on the far right over there. Hi. Hey. Since you're playing Thor, I gotta know. How do you pronounce the name of Thor's hammer? <laughs> well, I've been told, this is in, in, in much discussion, uh, it's Mjolnir. And uh, if anyone disagrees... That was what we, uh, we, we sort of uh, decided and we were told by you know, Stan Lee and, and those guys. So. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Um, right there. Um, I don't actually have a question. I just uh, wanted to say that when I went to go see Star Trek, I wasn't expecting to have my heart just pulled on in the first ten minutes. And your scene... Your scene was just so well done and so well acted that it brought me to tears. So I wanted to personally thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I was very lucky. I'd, um, I'd actually just finished shooting a movie in, in here in Chicago and flew back to LA and um, got a phone call one Friday afternoon and said, quick, drop everything, uh, drive into, into Paramount and, and meet with JJ Abrams. And I sat at his desk and read the scene because it was all very secretive. And he said, great, you start on Monday. And then, um, I was like, well, on this film? He said, yeah. <laughs> And that was it, and I was very lucky to be, you know, working with someone like him, and yeah, he put together such an amazing thing, so but thank you very much. Great, uh, in the green? I just wanted to say I've never been that big of a fan of Thor, nobody attacked me now. Get out, boy. Get out. <laughs> but, I just wanted to say, when I, when I saw the first trailer, and I saw you as girls, I was like, holy crap, I think I'm a fan of Thor now. <laughs> the way, just the trailer, the way you portray him in the trailer, you know, just get pretty alone. I'm like, man, oh, Thor's pretty fast. Awesome. <laughs> and I was just wondering, what is it like to know that now you have an action figure? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. It's, uh, yeah, never did I, you know, I, I thought about doing a lot of other things as a kid, but I never thought I'd have an action figure. And, uh, yeah, that's, it's, it's crazy and hilarious and awesome. And this is more of my long words. Of, <laughs> it doesn't mean much, but um, no, it was, it was, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. Can you also, can you scream for Asgard and Land out of your voice, please? in the plaid. Hold on, Chris. Hey. I'm over here. I just want to ask about uh, Red Dawn and what should we expect story-wise. Yeah. And uh, did you get any advice from Charlie Sheen at all? He's uh, <laughs> uh, been unavailable lately. You know, know where he is. Uh, it, it's, uh, well, the story, you know, it's, it's very, very similar to the, the original. Um, I was saying before that it follows probably a little closer the you know, the personal relationships with the kids a bit more, especially the, the two brothers. Um, but it's, um, it was a lot of fun to shoot and, you know, it was an exciting film. Dan Bradley, um, who was a, a stunt director, who did all the stunts for uh, some of the Born Identity and Indiana Jones and Spider-Man. And, you know, he's one of the top notch guys. And, and, you know, so the film's full of great action and, uh, and it's a good story. So. I just want to thank you for coming to Chicago, too. Thanks for having me. Cheers. All right, looks like um, Chris Evans has a question for you. Chris Evans, what you? Hey, hello. <laughs> um, obviously, in Thor, you're kind of, you're, it's your duty to carry the film since you're the lead actor. <laughs> but um, how do you think your role and your position in the film changes from Thor to the Avengers, where you have three giant leads uh, uh, carrying the film? Yeah, um, it helps, you know? It's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it, you know, you're surrounded by, uh, or, you know, I'll be surrounded by people who are uh, far more established and, you know, many more years of experience, you know, so it's, it only helps and, um, you know, you have these very colourful characters on screen and off screen, so it's, um, it's, it's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. In the red. Hi. Um, this isn't really a question either. But I just want to say I'm really excited for the film. It looks awesome. 
but a big critique for the uh, VIP package. The signatures were great. I, it looked really good, except with all that muscle you're packing on, I was expecting piggyback rides around the con. <laughs> Put her in the Yoda pack. About the what? Scrolls. The scrolls. No, possibly the Avengers. No, this I, I can't tell you anything. <laughs> And also, will you be reprising your role in the sequel to Adventures in Babysitting? If Adventures in Babysitting, hopefully, yeah. That's a, that's a separate uh, contract, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Um, Sir Neil um, So there have been plenty of comic book movies that have kind of flopped, especially for Marvel. I won't name any names, but I think the you know is what I'm thinking about. Is there, is there any, uh, any tension going into either going into Thor or now that it's all put together? Like, how does that make you feel knowing that there's a lot of expectation? Um, look, for, for me, the, um, you know, the, the, the hard work for my bit is done, you know, and, and we all put in, you know, 110%, you know, shooting the film and, um, you know, and, and I think that's, that's all you can really do as long as you do your bit. And there's so many elements in it, you know, from individual cast and then the collaboration of that and the director and the story and then marketing and you know god depending on what time of the year it is and you know if the, something else is on that weekend or not and you know I, we just hope to make a great film hopefully it reaches everybody and or as many people as we can and um you know you want it to do well and I'm, I'm, I f we, we all feel incredibly excited about it but um yeah you know it's i mean i'm really enjoying this process and you know um it's it's something that if I was having to talk about a film I wasn't proud of or wasn't excited about, it's you know it's a hell of a lot more difficult. But this is um, this is great because I, I really am proud of it and, and think it's think it's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, uh, Batman. <laughs> Hi, you're all here. Uh, I got a two-part question. Um, I see you've still got some of your Thor muscle there. Would you mind showing off your, uh, your muscles? <laughs> I have to see the film, mate. Okay. Oh. Okay. Uh, the second part was, can you answer the next question in Thor speak? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, God, no. That's, uh, no. I mean, I'm, I'm, not without, you know, ruining my, uh, what, you know, whatever I've, I've earned with you guys so far. <laughs> I want to keep it good. Awesome. So, thank you. I'm um, right here. Hey, my name's Jeff. I write for Flixus.com. Um, I was wondering, how was it like working with Natalie Portman, especially now she won Best Actress? Uh, oh, it's incredible. Um, you know, back then, uh, she'd just come off Black Swan and was, you know, telling, telling us all how, you know, how, how exhausting it was, and, but, you know, how excited she was about the film. Um, and she's, you know, been one of my favorite actresses for a long time. And, and also, it's just such a wonderful person, you know. And as a, you know, you know new to the business compared with her, it was, um, you know, felt really supported. So I, I was uh, very lucky. Awesome. Hi, uh, Mr. Hemsworth. Um, <laughs> oh, I can't because I'm too tall. There we go. Uh, we've seen actors like Ryan Reynolds and Chris Evans do multiple superheroes when they had the opportunity. Yeah. If you could play another superhero besides Thor, who would you want to be? Mm, tough question. It, it um, could be Marvel, DC, anybody. No? Yeah. No one is it. Um, I don't know. I mean, the, the sort of the, the, you know, I, I didn't read comic books growing up, and the ones I, 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 you know, knew about, I've seen in films already and wouldn't try and, you know, better them because I've, you know, the, you know, I mean, Downey, you know, has done such a great job, and, you know, those guys. So it's, um, I don't know, I mean, who do I? Um, hey, man, there you go. Yeah, why not? It's a, it's a similar, I guess, isn't it? Barbarian. Barbarian-esque. Um, let, let me have a think. I'll try and answer that in the next couple of minutes. If, if you could do Aquaman, would you do it? Oh, no. 
Sure. Um, growing up as a kid, without really being conscious of sort of acting so much, it was um, the films that I watched and loved, you know, things like Never Ending Story, you know, I loved that sort of fantasy element of that, and, um, and actually lived up in Northern Territory in Australia in, in a, on a Buffalo cattle station, and we had um, a VHS tape, and that was sort of it, and there was no TV, you know, reception, so we watched that over and over and over. And, um, that certainly was, you know, as a kid, one of the most memorable sort of films. Um, also, uh, you know, I mean, Sean Penn, I've always loved his work, and uh, Johnny Depp, and uh, Gary Oldman, and uh, Paul Giamatti, and, um, you know, I mean, the, the Mel Gibson, Russell Crowe, uh, Heath Ledger, you know, there's a lot of, you know, Hugh Jackman, you know, guys from, you know, from Australia, but also, you know, made the leap across to the States and were inspiring. Um, I could go on a lot, but uh, it's a wonderful life with Jimmy Stewart. It was always a, a favourite. Yeah, I, I love that. Movie. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Best of luck. Uh, Lady Batman. <laughs> um, you said that you didn't read a lot of comics growing up, but you also said you dressed up as a superhero. Yeah. So who did you dress up? I had a, I had a Robin costume. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess Robin is here. Yeah, Robin, there you go, that's my answer. Chris, Chris and Owen was calling next week. Yeah, yeah, he hasn't, he hasn't called yet. <laughs> I did, I had this, uh, I, I was like, I don't know, 18, uh, three or four. Um, <laughs> I had this, uh, this, this, this red and yellow cape and this sort of underwear I wore on the outside of my pants and all this, <laughs> and some pieces and, uh, yeah, it's pretty funny, huh? <laughs> Trying to dig that up. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, right here. Um, how do you feel being Captain Kirk's dad? <laughs> oh, that was that was great. It was a great honour to yeah be able to play that part, you know, and, and, uh, and you know that's sort of to be part of that film as well, going back and doing a you know an origin story of it all, and yeah. it being a, 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 as successful as it was was very exciting and uh, it made me very happy. <laughs> Cheers. Right here. This is a two-part question. The first one is, I think you've done justice with the Thor thing, just looking at the trailer, so I have really no <laughs> questions about that, but like everybody's been talking about in the Avengers movie, you are going to be with Iron Man, Captain America, Hulk, if they get his reboot done, Spider-Man. <laughs> um, and in the comics, Hulk and Thor have, in the beginning, never, and in television, anywhere, have never been really on the same side. You've seen Thor punch um, Hulk before, and Hulk go smash on Thor. So how do you feel about possibly going up against, as a um, struggle for Avengers poster boy leader, when the origin of the Avengers movie comes up, how do you feel about maybe having to go up against Hulk, Iron Man, or somebody who just doesn't like Thor being in the Avengers in the new Avengers? Almost as intimidating as that question. That was, uh, that's, 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 I'm going to track back now, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, how do I feel? He's a big bloke, isn't he? A big, angry, scary guy. Uh, and uh, but the Thor's, you know, got some, got some, got some power too, so... It'll, uh, it'll be interesting. There's a lot of egos in, in, with those guys, and I'm sure they'll, they'll clash. My second question is, I, like I said, I think you did justice in the Thor movie, but I just want to know how you really felt about how you did, how the rest of the performance went, and all the bones in my body are just screaming, please, <laughs> do not carry Schumacher in. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, put nipples on that man. <laughs> what was that? Uh, the... Okay, so 
So what? Um, <laughs> wait, 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 what? what, what the are you happy? Yeah, how do I feel about it? You know, it's um, you get pretty, pretty self-critical as an actor, you know, and especially watching yourself is on a 60-foot screen is pretty uh, uncomfortable experience. Um, but I've got to be honest, when I saw a screening of Thor on the big screen, there, there were so many elements in the film, and, and the film was just so well put together, and, you know, I certainly didn't look like I do when I look in the mirror, so it was easier to watch, I guess, but I really was, you know, swept along like an audience member with that, you know, um, and, and was able to sort of enjoy it for the first time, you know, <laughs> watching myself. I mean, not, there was still a bit of this going on, a lot of that, when I came on the screen, but, the film itself was, um, you know, in, in, so impressive that, you know, I was, uh, it was easier, I guess, than normal. But I was, so there's my answer, I guess. Am I happy with it? Yeah, yeah. You know, I feel, I feel excited. So. Right. Thank you. <laughs> okay, one last question. <laughs> one last question then, unfortunately we're out of time, so I'm um, right here on the left. Hi Chris, first of all, uh, good luck and congratulations with the film. Thank you very much. The, I haven't heard. No, sorry. Uh, what was it? The... There are shield recruitment booths inside recruiting field agents. Oh. Yeah, you you said I should, I should go and apply. Well, you have your face on a wanted poster over there. I thought that means you could stop by and sign it if you could. Uh, is it, maybe, we, yeah, we might be able to make that happen. Sure. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you everybody so much for coming in. Let's give it up one more time for uh, Chris Hensworth.